listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. I'm your host, Shanna Register, and every week we bring you news and information you can use on your next real estate transaction. If you thought about buying land, or maybe you already own land, this is going to be an ideal segment for you to hear because we're talking about mineral rights, uh, and there are a lot of issues that go along with it. We're not going to be able to squeeze it all into 10 minutes, but we're at least going to give you some general information about it and uh, and a direction to go if, if if you're caught in a situation where mineral rights are involved. If you miss any of today's show, you can catch us online at HoustonRealEstateRadio.com. And as always, you can find us over on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Houston Real Estate Radio. All right, well, we are going to get started with Judon Fambro. He's a senior lecturer and attorney at law with the Texas Real Estate Center at Texas A&M University over there in College Station. And so he is calling in today since he's uh, out of town, not in the Houston area. He's calling in. So we appreciate you. How you doing, Judon? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling in. I know you've been working on uh, mental rights for people for so long. Um, You've taught legal classes and written so many articles and really have an in-depth knowledge about this. And so we really wanted to talk with you about it and just really give the consumers at home an overview because sometimes they don't know what they're getting into if they've never owned land in Texas and they want to go out and buy, you know, 15, 20 acres to go hunt on and have have some, uh, some weekend fun. You know, they don't even know the right questions to ask about the property um, and mineral rights. And then, of course, you have a lot of landowners that own a lot of of land out in West Texas and um, certainly out in the Hill Country. So I want to talk a little bit about these mineral rights and what they mean to consumers who are purchasing property, because the mineral rights obviously don't always go along with the land purchase. And so if you're not going to get those uh, mineral rights with your land purchase, you at least want to know the ramifications of that, right? Oh, that's definitely true. Definitely yeah. true. And in fact, what's interesting, I'm writing an article on title insurance. And titles, if you buy title insurance, they will mostly, for the most part, will accept the minerals. They say, we'll tell you who owns the surface, but we're not going to tell you who owns the minerals. That's right. When you get right. title insurance. Yeah. It's only for the surface. That's right. They don't even research it anymore. And that amazes me that they don't even research to see who owns the minerals anymore. You have to hire your own land man to go out there and research it if you want to know who owns them. Um, and that costs a lot of money. It does. It does. Uh, I have, I've done title opinions for oil companies, and it, it's hard work. It, it's difficult, especially in some counties are worse than others when trying to run the title back to the sovereign. It, it is difficult. So let's let's kind of start from an overview, and then we can get more detailed. So if a consumer is purchasing property in Texas, and they are not going to get the mineral rights, the seller is going to reserve the mineral rights, and the seller um, has a lease on those mineral rights, whether any pumping's being done or not, whether anything's ever been done or not, if they own a lease, then that uh, purchaser, that buyer, what do, what do they need to know? What are those questions they need to ask that seller? Should they ask to review the lease? What do they need to know? Yes, I, I think they they need to review the lease, not from the aspect of knowing who owns the minerals, but mm-hmm. the, just from the aspect to see if there's any surface protection provisions in that lease that would guarantee them that they would at least clean up, and, you know, and uh, maybe leave them a, a water well or something like that. So there, if there are any surface protection provisions that were negotiated in that lease, you would know what to anticipate in lieu of those provisions. If there's no surface protection provisions in there, uh, you may want to take a second look because in Texas, an oil and gas company, whenever any, I don't care whether the mineral owner owns the surface or not, whenever they sign the lease, they have the absolute right to use as much of that surface as reasonably necessary without asking permission, without paying damages, and without cleaning up. So. That's a, that's a big bear, a burden put on a surface owner in Texas that owns no minerals. So if you're not getting the minerals, you better see if there's some type of protection you can right. get in the lease. And that will only last for the duration of this lease. When this lease right. expires, you don't know what's going to happen to the next one. So if and it's that's a- what you may want to talk to that person if they own the minerals about something mm-hmm. You'll get some surface protection provisions in the next lease they negotiate. So, if you uh, currently have a three to five year lease and you sell the property, when that lease is up for renewal, um, you would you as the buyer would w- just want to ask and make sure that they're going to renew the same lease, right? Well, depending if it had surface protection provisions in it, and again, when you say renew, uh, that oil company, the next oil company may not be the same one you have now. 
Right, so they may negotiate. They may, may be a different company, and mm-hmm. they may not be able to negotiate service protection provisions. Right. There is a way in Texas that if the seller does own some of the minerals, mm-hmm. then you can get some surface protection provisions by saying, you know, well, you give me all rights of ingress and egress for future oil and gas production. Mm-hmm. Uh, that That is a way to gain some protection, but it would only occur after this per- this present lease expires, not not during this lease. Um, on the new real estate contracts that, that I say new, I guess it was in January of last year that they changed, um, it provides for um, the minerals to automatically pass to the buyer. And if you're not going to do that, then you kind of have to do your own, have an attorney draw out the reservations. Is that right? Well, in Texas, if you don't reserve the minerals, they autom- they automatically go to the buyer. Right, which is so how our contract is, is written, where they automatically go. Yeah. So in the addendum that they that Trek has come up with, it, it basically says you are if you own them, you're reserving them, all or part of them, or you're going to convey them. So there is a choice you make on that form. But for the most part, uh, I always tell everybody, the only way you can get minerals are to marry them or inherit them. It's hard to purchase them. So anybody right. that has a mineral rights, you usually hang on to them pretty tightly. Yeah. So for people who... But, but, but in that form, you, you either choose, you're either reserving them or you're conveying them in that form. There is no... there Again, if you don't reserve them, they automatically go uh, with to the, to the buyer. That's just the rule of Texas. And so you reserve them... If you, the seller, just reserve them, is that enough to do that on that addendum, or do you need to do something in addition well, to that? In, to well, the addendum it. is put in the contract, so you need to really put it two places. You're going to put it. You're going to reserve them both in the contract and make really sure that it's it's placed on the deed that they reserve. What what the people do when they go to the courthouse, they read the deeds. They don't read the contract. So right. if the seller is reserving the minerals, he better show that to the buyer in the contract. And they better show it to the world on the deed they give the buyer that they are reserving the minerals. Because if there is no mineral reservation, uh, they go to the to the buyer. And yeah. I've written an article that they people can get where the contract says I'm reserving the minerals. I'm talking about the seller, mm-hmm. and then whoever drafts the the deed forgets to put the reservation in there. So mm-hmm. you have a dichotomy of what the contract says versus what the deed says. Right. And. And there's been a lot of litigation on that. Basically, you have to get the deed reform to reflect the contract in that situation, which takes litigation. So make sure that if you are reserving the deed, I don't want to say it in the contract, but it also says it in the deed. Right. Okay. All right. And for people who are purchasing property and they are going to receive some mineral rights, they're normally not going to receive 100%. I mean, the 100% is usually broken up between a lot of different generations of different owners. But if they get a sliver of the mineral rights that are passed forward, um, do, is that really enough to have any rights to the, I mean, I know they could have potential income off of it, but as far as protecting surface rights, is that enough to be able to protect your surface rights? You know that's a that's a good question, and uh, as far as I know, is if you have what we call the the minerals are made up of five rights: the executive right, the right to sign a lease, the right to enter and, and produce the minerals, so enter, explore, and produce the minerals, and there's the right to receive the lay rentals, the right to receive royalties, and the right to receive bonus. Those are five rights. So, if you own any sliver of the executive rights, in other words, you can you can shatter those in any direction you want to. You can make an infinite combination of how you make those five rights. If you own 100% of the minerals, you own 100% of the five rights. Mm-hmm. If you own a sliver, you're just a co-tenant. As long as you own a sliver, and some sliver, and the bigger, the more you own, the better, mm-hmm. of the executive rights, that's when you get your protection in the oil and gas lease, because you, with the executive rights, they'll ask you to sign the lease. And before you sign the lease, you try to negotiate as much as you can your service protection provisions. Yeah. So owning the minerals, the main thing is to own any portion of the executive rights. Okay. All right. Great information. Last question for you is on water. Can, can you put provisions in your lease to protect the water on the property? Uh, no, that's a good one. That's a good one. Now, I'll ask you a question, Shannon. If the minerals in the surface have been severed, Mm-hmm. You own the minerals and I own the surface. Which of us owns the groundwater? I'd say it has to be in the lease how much you can use. <laughs> no. Uh, water you just own it is all? the surface. 
the surface. That's the all of the water. I'm talking about groundwater, not mm-hmm. surface water. But the groundwater right. belongs to the surface owner. Okay. So we split the minerals on the surface. The groundwater goes with the surface ownership. Okay. And that gives that oil company the right to use as much of the groundwater as long with the physical surface as they reasonably need without permission and paying for it. So if the mineral owner owns no surface, yeah. <clears throat> they can't protect the groundwater because they don't own any. Now, obviously, if you own the surface and the minerals, then you better protect your groundwater along with your surface. Uh because they can use as much of the groundwater, and that comes into the fracking. Right. And they use about 10 to 40 acre feet per frack, are you with me? But Which is a lot of water. So, so on, you better protect your water if you own it. So on that lease, can't you protect how much water they are able to use? Only if you own the water, and that's only if you own the surface. Okay. Because the groundwater is owned by the surface owner okay now would can you do it now it's a good question can you protect something you don't own in the lease uh yeah, i've always said if you're a surface owner that owns no minerals go to the mineral owner and give him the power of attorney to go in there and, <laughs> and so that's the way to do it that he has a right to put a provision in his lease to protect your groundwater if you're on a on a salt shale area because uh, there are some of those in Texas, and the water is um, has that salt to it. Is that still able? Are they still able to use that for fracking? Is that considered like a brackish water? Or? Yeah, that's a, that's a, probably a technical question, but I can tell you in the past, if you use anything that's not fresh water, because of the chemicals they put into the frac fluid. Uh, it, it reacts with the salt. So they like fresh water. Now, they are making strides in using brackish water to frack with, but it's well, not just the fresh, water they're fracking but it's got with, it's the chemicals. Salt. Yeah, there's just a lot of salt shells over there. So. <laughs> it is, <laughs> and, uh, and it probably would be marginal for use for fracking. Yeah, okay. All right, well, great information. We appreciate it. We're going to go to a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back here on Houston Real Estate Radio.